Come on in, welcome to my home. It's morning. I just had breakfast. I'm about to take a shower before I go over and change, before I go over and take care of mom. I mean, it's not like she needs a whole lot of taking care of, but there are some things that I do have to do for her, like her making breakfast can be difficult, not impossible, but difficult. And then there's also the big thing, which I hadn't even thought of until last night. So last night, my cousin calls and says he and his wife are coming down at the end of the month. And you're like, well, that really doesn't mean a whole lot because, you know, families are now vaccinated, yes. And they're visiting each other, yes. However, in over a year, this is the first time that the family has been down, that any family has been down. And this is amazing. And when I realized that, I actually stood there at my place, not at mom's, and cried. I ugly cried, I'll admit it. Because it was such a relief to finally have somebody else coming down. I am not saying in any way, shape, or form that mom has been difficult to work with, really. There have been problems, though. One of the problems is she's depressed. I mean, nobody comes down. She can't do anything. She, she broke her arm. Was she like this before she broke her arm? No. That's the big thing. No. And that was the moment that I realized how absolutely draining this whole thing has become, not just to her, but also to me. Because my whole big thing in all of this has always been to try to keep up her spirits, to try to show her how things, how she's doing much better, which, by the way, she is doing way, way, way better, and that's really great. And so I would go out of my way to cheer her up, to make sure that she saw that things are progressing, that sort of stuff. And I would do anything that I could think of to make sure that she remembered that. The problem was I forgot about me. Now on the surface of this you might think, well that doesn't make a whole lot of difference. Well, it sort of does. Because what you have to think about is the fact that if you are a caregiver, no matter what kind of caregiver, kids, spouse, whatever, and you don't take care of yourself, that can be an issue. That can be a really big issue. And like I said, once I found out that they were coming, I was so relieved, and yet felt so guilty about being relieved about that. And, I mean, there's so many different emotions in this, but the big thing people forget about is they forget to take care of themselves while they're taking care of the person who they're supposed to be taking care of. If you've ever been in an airplane, you've probably heard the emergency uh, the crash landing speech, which says, In the unlikely event of an emergency, an oxygen mask will drop down from the ceiling. Please place the oxygen mask over your nose and mouth. In the case you are traveling with a child or a person who needs to be cared for, please place your oxygen mask over your nose and mouth first, and then assist those who you are accompanying with their oxygen mask. Thank you for flying. The reason is, you need to take care of yourself first, and then you can take care of the person that you're taking care of. Because if other people have to take care of both of you, it's going to take extra time. But if you take care of yourself and then take care of that person, then there's enough time for everybody. And that's a big thing to remember. Now, if you go online and you look up self-care, there are a lot of things for self-care. Everything from yoga to meditation to gardening, dancing, whatever. However, the problem is, what is self-care? Are all of those things right for you? And my answer is, I don't know. I mean, is meditation good for you? Is yoga good for you? Well, only you can give me that answer. Only you can give you that answer. Just because some self-help guru has told you that this is what you should be doing for self-care, that doesn't mean much. It just means that somebody wrote something down because it worked for them. Just remember, your self-care has to work for you. If it doesn't, then it's not self-care, it's just you doing what somebody's told you to do, which might actually cause you way more stress. I mean, sitting in a room with uh, incense and gongs and crystals might do nothing for you but stress you out. So that's something to really think about. 
think about will this really and honestly work for you. Sitting out on your front porch enjoying nature might actually not work. If your front porch is a mess, and the nature you're enjoying is machinery, and it's really loud, and it's not the peaceful sereneness that you were expecting. So, it doesn't really become self-care. In fact, it just becomes sort of stressful. Looking around at things to find out what makes you happy is important, and finding that thing that makes you happy is way more important than what that thing necessarily is. Because the important part about this is, as long as you are not harming yourself, or anyone else, or you're neglecting the person that you're supposed to be taking care of, it probably is self-help. So that means don't fall into the trap of, well, self-help can only be one or the other. No, no, I, I don't know what all self-help can be. Self-care can be all sorts of different things which make you feel refreshed. That means they shouldn't stress you out. If it stresses you out, it's probably not a good idea for self-care. But if it doesn't and it makes you feel relaxed and calm and refreshed so that you can go then go ahead and do the things which you actually have to do, that, that's really important because you're going to have to do a lot. And so if you end up gardening by flashlight because that's the only time that you have to do your self-care, then that's fine. Garden by flashlight. Give the neighbors something to talk about. But make sure that it works for you and your schedule. Because, yeah, it'd be a lot of fun to be able to go for long country drives during the day, but that might not be in your plans or your wheelhouse of availability. And while collecting wildflowers on a big country meadow might seem like a really great idea to help reduce stress, it might not be available. You might not have a country meadow. You might not have the time to get out to a country meadow. I don't know. But realistically, look at what you have around you, what you have available, and go for that. If it's binge watching whatever of your favorite show is, Binge watch away, you feel good. But the other thing about it is there are also other activities which you probably need to do, which is self-care, which you might not, like, think about. Exercise is a form of self-care that you might have been like me and let go because you just didn't think you had the time enough to put it into your realm of possibilities. Well, maybe you should add it back. I'm trying to add mine back now that things are getting a little bit better because it's one of those things where if you keep yourself in a healthy way, that will help you take care of the person who you're supposed to be taking care of. You know, take care of yourself and care for the ones who you love. So that might be something you might have to look into, which while it's not the most fun and glamorous of self-care, it is one of those things that you can actually do for yourself which is really good, along with taking your vitamins, getting enough rest, and eating well. All of which, at least I get enough rest. That's a good thing. I will admit, at the beginning of this pandemic, I did what a lot of people did. I let everything go. In the morning, I would doom scroll to see how bad things were. I'd ask myself, damage report, and go on with my day just hooked on the fact that everything was spiraling out of control and super, super bad. I would sit there and listen to our governor's uh, press conferences, which at first were every single day for about two hours. Two hours of nothing but bad news and how bad things were going. And I did. I just let everything go. Was I super, super depressed? Probably. Was I acting like I was depressed? Not really. But the other part about this was, it was one of those things which was affecting everything else, so I just sort of let it go. But then, things started getting a little bit better, and I started getting back into the things which I normally would do, which I stopped doom scrolling, and I stopped listening to the news every five seconds and just got the highlights of it. So I could find out what was going on, keep myself informed, without bringing myself down guess what? That is a form of, you know, 
self-care. Self-care also means preserving yourself where you get enough information, the information that you need from a reliable news source or from a reliable source, but it doesn't consume you and overwhelm you. So limiting your actual, you know, con 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 consummation, yeah, consummation of uh, consumption, there we go, <laughs> consumption of, of uh, information can be really good. Also, social media, as I have said many, many times before, social media has a couple different problems with it. One is, it's a lot of people's highlight reel, and two, it's a lot of people yelling at each other. You're an idiot. No, you're an idiot. Dude, like you're both idiots. Great, that's wonderful. So you're all idiots. I don't care. I look at social media to see, hey, what are my friends doing in their lives? And that's probably where I stop now with social media. I now more am into things like, what can I do for myself or for my home or for my environment or for the people who I love? And if there's something on social media which will show me that this is a really cool thing you could try, I'll check it out. If there's not, guess what? I'm not going to check it out. I'm not going to obsess and worry about who's yelling at who and for why because that doesn't solve any problems. My self-care is to step away from social media. Not totally, because obviously I'm on here, but enough so that I've had, I've written some really great comebacks to what people have said on social media, then deleted them, simply because why get into this fight? I'm not going to fight with people on social media. Instead, I'm going to fight for myself and the people who I love and make sure that they get the help and care that they need. One of the things that I have really started doing, or stopped doing, depending upon how you look at it, is I've stopped dreaming about the day of when I can do certain things and started planning for the days of when I, will can, when I can do things that I can actually do. You know, instead of dreaming for that vacation, which may or may not happen, I plan for the day when I can actually do something here, which would be just as much fun and or just as much relaxation as a vacation would be. So I can put ground myself into the reality of this is what I can do now, so I can do it instead of waiting for, well, as soon as things completely open back up, then I'll take time to relax. Because it goes along with that whole bizarre saying, we can always rest when we're dead. Well, you're going to be dead a little sooner if you don't rest and take care of yourself and hydrate. Remember to drink lots of water. But yeah, plan for what you can do now. It is something to look forward to in the short term, not the long term. Don't plan for something that you can't, don't even have the money for, because that's a dream. If you're saving up for it, yeah, you're planning for it. If you've got made moves towards it, yeah, but you might need things that you can tangibly do now. Unless that is what you only want it to do. But when it comes to self-care, self-care is really coming on to the things that can you do this now if you can't find something because you might need that self-care a little bit more than what you think you did. Which is what I found out, you know, at the beginning of this when I told you that my cousins are coming down really soon and I realized how absolutely exhausted that I was because I need that rest. I need that moment where I can sit back and say, hey, it is time to recharge. So yeah. Even if your big thing is just changing the light color in a room to something which makes you happier or more relaxed or whatever. Maybe it's just something as simple as having some fun with it. Go ahead have fun, do whatever you want. You can go on, put on some relaxing party music and just let the lights play and have your fun. Enjoy yourself because this is something I can tangibly do and even if it's just for a few minutes or seconds that I'm actually thrilled and happy with this and I can just giggle at the silliness of it, that's cool. Also, do your decoration that way, too. Make your house so that it has things in your house that you love, which bring a smile to your face because if you are there and you can't go anywhere, 
you might as well have some fun with it. So put up the decorations that you love, enjoy yourself, listen to some music that you're really going to love, because those are the things which really are going to take you out of that moment and then put you into a moment of self-care, a moment of happiness and enjoyability. Enjoyability, that's a word, right? Um, it's going to make you just bring a smile to your face. Please, please do that. In fact, down in the comments, let other people know what you do to take care of yourself because they might come up with some ideas that you hadn't thought of, you might come up with ideas that they haven't thought of, and all throughout this video you've seen me do a lot of different things which might be self-care. You might try them, you might not. You might love them, you might hate them, I won't know and you won't know until you try them. Let me know down in the comments what you thought about this. If you're interested in supporting this channel, which right now we need all the support that we can get, uh, you can join the Patreon where you get this and other, you get this, these videos early, and you also get a weekly vlog of what's going on behind the scenes. Or you can check out the memberships where you get the behind the scenes pictures so that you can see what goes into making a video like this. Let me know down in the comments what you thought about this, and I hope I get to see you again the next time you stop by.